Yep. Yep. I don't hear anything, Ben, if you hear me. I'm not hearing it, Ben. Here we go. Thank you. No. Set me free. Hey, everybody, welcome to, uh, let's see, I believe this is episode 26, Artist on Lockdown, hanging and banging with some of the biggest stars in rock and roll. Tonight is a night with the ladies. I'm talking about some amazing rock and rollers from Vixen, Janet Gardner, from the Runaways originally, of course, our, 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 as Carmine puts it, his little sister, Lita Ford. But they're both enjoying tremendous solo careers right now. And they're going to join us in just a moment. But before we do, live from the Arcata Theater in St. Charles, just outside of Chicago, uh, Chicago, Illinois, we're going to bring to my to the screen here one of my best friends now he doesn't realize it but he is my brother as well come on Vinny Vinny Apice from Dio from Last in Line <laughs> okay Black Sabbath okay How's I think, that? I think How's your that? shirt is really spectacular and you know what else Vinny I think by you going to the level of uh, uh, the effort of putting that shirt together it says a lot about you as an individual Took me all week to put this shirt together, and also it's to the side, just like yours. You know what? I just think you know it just shows the. You know what? Let's bring Carmine because he's got to see this. Carmine, uh, a piece from Vanilla Fudge. Look what I mean, Carm. Look at the the amount of time and effort he spent on that. I think it just shows that he cares. I mean, I I, I no. think that's very special. I and I think you should put on, <laughs> on your other boob. You should have put Janet. I was working on it. We ran out of time. That's true, too. Yeah. So why did you move it over to the side, Vinny? I mean, because you know. yours is to the side. Well, tonight, this is to say, this is what we call left chest. Okay. Yeah. See, I, I, can, <laughs> I don't I can move. It I actually don't doesn't look bad if you got shirts made and it was uh, right in the middle. Look. Yeah, go. Uh, okay. See, look at that how much. Good. Look at look at the time and effort that you put into that. It just says a lot about you as an individual. I think. I know. I know. Hey, what about me? This is the first time I ever wore a shirt that has writing on it. Uh -huh. Look at that. Look right. at that. that. Why well, didn't that, recognize wait, wait. without the sequence? That's because that's because <laughs> he's got a sponsor deal with them. Really? No, he, did, he, did, he didn't go out and buy the shirt. No, but I didn't want to wear this thing. This is too hot. See this? This thing's too hot. Right, it's so long right. sleeve. You just nice. wear that. Just wear that nice. around the house. That's all right, fine. all right. That's Listen, serious. enough with the fashion stuff because we all look like freaking morons with that. Frankly, actually, we've got a tremendous show tonight. Again, yes, with the again. Lead. Oh my goodness! So I think Melbourne, bring, Australia. Wow. Yeah, I know. You're all over the Woo. world here. Hey, let's bring, him, let's bring him. We're having a challenging, a little bit of a technical difficulty with uh, Miss Lita Ford, but she did call in. Where is your little sister there, Carmine? Let's bring her to the, to the there she is. Hi, Lita. Hey, Lita. Hey. Hi. 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 Thank you for having me. Yes. It's hey, awesome. I like the Thank way you. the circle moves when you talk. <laughs> <laughs> Look at hey, that. Hello, yeah. hello, hello. Uh -huh. It's going yeah. Yeah. That's great. That, that looks like 007. Yeah, what? man, that's pretty cool. <laughs> Look at that silhouette. The circle gets bigger with the loud when my voice gets louder. Yeah, that's right. Jeez. Well, thank ah. you so much for joining us. Uh, I'm just very, very excited. We're all excited, Lita. What have you been doing with all this crazy lockdown crap happening? Oh, my God, it's been insane. We came off the cruise ship uh, in March, and oh. uh, we went on the 80s cruise, and it, it was like, 
all the bands canceled on the cruise oh. and uh and then we came off the cruise and our summer of 2020 was postponed with alice cooper and so our entire year i mean you know, of course everybody's entire year is just yeah. sort of on hold <laughs> but uh so i started riding my bike and i just went crazy in the mountains i got a mountain bike and it's keeping me sane <laughs> <laughs> and in shape, That's right? cool. Yeah. Where exactly? Where in the mountains? In the uh, desert. In the, in the uh, desert. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm in the desert. Well, I know you're always keeping in shape. You look always look so good on stage. Such an electric show. People just go freaking nuts when you take the stage. Really, the energy is just outstanding. Cool. Yeah. cool. Yeah. It really, much. really is. Because I grew up hanging out with Carmine. <laughs> yes, she, yes, she did. We had a lot of good times. Well, you know what I'd like to do? Let's bring our other guest on as well, because she okay. is also a tremendous guitarist, vocalist. You know her from Vixen. Again, she is um, enjoying a solo breakout that's like going nuts. Let's bring her, Janet Gardner, to our microphone. Hi, Janet. Yay! Good you guys. Hey, we can hear you. All right. Yes. Well, it's so nice to see it, Janet. So nice to see you, and and thank you, ladies, for being. You know, we've been doing this now for, uh, like I said, I think it's twenty five or twenty six weeks. Dude, six and months. I know it's crazy. Oh it's crazy. We've been doing it, and it's really, really been amazing. People from all over the world have been chiming in. We've been having a great time talking. To some of the biggest. I mean, I know I have. I've been honored. You know, you guys know me from the Arcada Theater, right? Of course. Um, but you know, I get, and I hate giving, especially Vinny compliments. I really, really do. But I mean, talk about legends between Carmine and Vinny, Vinny. And I, every week I say this, I know every week, the people that come on, they say, just like what you said, Lita, I mean, Carmine and Vinny, I mean, these are legends and they've affected and touched so many lives in the music world. Yeah. I mean, for, for decades. And I'm honored to be a part of it. But but tonight, having you guys, you know, it's ladies' night here. Yeah. And really appreciate you guys being on. But this is the Thank first so time much, we've had any female guests. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. It's right. ladies' yeah. night. Well, and it's six months. Come it on. is. It is. It's ladies' we'll night. Trying. Pour the drinks, guys. Pour the drinks. <laughs> it's, not, it's not easy getting girls. I know. Well, for the, <laughs> never speak, was. Speak for yourself. <laughs> Hey, wait, 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 no, come on. You know me, I've been married too many times. That's right. Hey, <laughs> hey, Lita, you know what? Yeah. We've, we've, been, uh, we've been touching this uh, a little bit like everybody, and I don't want to keep, you know, uh, uh, talking about this. We're talking about Eddie Van Halen, obviously. We had a great show that was dedicated just uh, to Eddie. We had uh, Ted Nugent on, several people on. And, um, and I couldn't help but notice on your Twitter page uh, a great shot of you and Eddie. Do you have a recollection you'd like to share? Oh God! Oh, right, <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, we grew up in California. You know, in the in the Orange County, Hollywood area, in all the backstage parties that Van Halen would play, and then you know they were just like backstage party guys, and mm -hmm. uh, of course they were amazing. And then after the shows, after their their jams we would just go someplace like we would all hop in a car and go someplace for the night i mean we would just party all night and um and then you know the next day i, I remember one day um one morning edward took me to his house for breakfast he's like no just just come to my house and i'll make breakfast and i'm thinking oh okay you know cheese omelet sausage you know something <laughs> bacon so he just, uh, he, he drags me in the kitchen and his mom is standing there and he gets a carton of milk and a packet of carnation instant breakfast <laughs> and mixes me up a carnation instant uh, breakfast. Here you go. Here's your breakfast. And then that that breakfast. sounds like him. That sounds like him. Yeah. Uh, it's just, you know, and then, you know, he would hot wire right. his car. Like he never had a key to his car. It was just wires hanging. <laughs> and it, he was just insane. He was just like a mad scientist. And, and how the house, I know when I went to his house, it smelled like smoke. Always. Everything. Right? The guitar and case smells like smoke. Everything smelled like smoke. I went to the studio, smelled like smoke. 
went to the car, it smells like smoke. No, yep. I don't remember. I just remember wires hanging everywhere. <laughs> the guitars, the, he never really put those guitars together. They were just a creation. Yep. You know, there was like stuff hanging, and but it, they sure sounded good. Yeah, yeah. Let me ask you, ladies, uh, something. I mean, you know, you you hear this. Uh, you've been here. I, you've heard it over the over the years. You know how it was uh, challenging for for uh, women in rock and roll, or challenging in, for women in music in general to to break in. And that's kind of. I'm sure that's an obvious statement. I'm sure it was challenging in certain areas. But you know, I look at both of your uh, ladies' careers, and you, you started so young. You're 16 years old. You're 17 years old. And you're already on tour, and you're with the big boys, and bam, I mean, you're talking, you know, I mean, with even Vixen. I mean, you 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 come out, you're with, you're opening for Ozzy and and Bon Jovi and 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 Kiss, and just so many of these big things. The Runaways just took off right at the beginning. Um, do you did you find it a little bit uh, uh, more welcoming than you think other uh, females had, had to deal with at the time? Huh. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Go ahead, Lena. You can start. Oh, uh, well. Um, I remember our first tour, very first tour when I left home. We went on the road with the Ramones. Mm -hmm. Oh wow! The Runaways opened for the Ramones. It was three mm -hmm. months through the United States, and uh, I mean they were hardcore. Nineteen seventy six, and uh, the audience was. Um, they would throw things at the Ramones. <laughs> yep. And so they had chicken wire up in front of the stage. <laughs> oh, man. You know, and it was like, wham! You get hit for a handful of change. Yes. Or a flying can of Budweiser. Yes. Oh, my God. So insane. Yeah. It's like that scene in Animal House. Yes, right? exactly. Blues Brothers, Blues Brothers, Blues Brothers, I mean. Blues yeah. Brothers, yeah. Exactly. I, I think... Uh, there was one with um, Jeff Healy, too. Isn't okay. there some scene like that where he gets... And then, then the Runaways, uh, yep. you know, they, they would get spit on. And in the punk era, that was a compliment. So if you didn't get spit on, then you just weren't cool enough. <laughs> you know, so the spit would fly like the whole place would just... You could see all the spit flying. Oh. And, you know, you're playing guitar and then like a big loogie lands on your fretboard <laughs> oh man and you're just like well you know do i stop and wipe it off oh my god yep do i just keep playing through it uh, and that's it you imagine know, that happening now you have oh my to gosh playing through it oh so you get 10 years in prison from that tour three months later my dad picked me up at lax airport and i got <laughs> off the plane and i saw my dad standing there and i just cried my eyes out <laughs> that was my first time you know just dad i'm home <laughs> and that, i never cried after that that was the only time that, that, that really did that too when he after his first tour <laughs> oh man i cried oh my yeah, <laughs> hold me Squeeze me. <laughs> <laughs> how about you, Janet? How was your experience? Well, when we started, we weren't opening for anybody. We were just, you know, this girl band, and people didn't know what they were going to get. Mm -hmm. So I, I remember one time in Oklahoma, we were um, we were playing a place called the Ramblin' Rose, and I, you know, it was a country bar. And at the time, we were even heavier than, you know, we ended up being in the '80s. Yeah. So it was really loud and really, um, you know, obnoxious. So they kept telling us to turn down. So we kept turning down a little bit, turning down a little bit. And they finally ended up saying, look, we'll pay you not to play. <laughs> <laughs> so we had a lot of experiences like that where, you know, people didn't know what, who we were or what they were getting. So a lot of times they were shocked that we were, you know, a metal band. Hard rock band, mm -hmm. they expected yeah. some cute girl thing, and that's not what they got. So that's but, for sure. Yeah, it was it was interesting in the beginning, but you know, after a while, people started to figure out who we were, and then you know, we got to open for some bands that made amazing sense to us, and um, then people were a little more willing to accept it. But at first, yeah, it was rough. You really shock people. They were, they were going to go see something, you know, 
right cute and sweet and we weren't cute or sweet no well you definitely were cute but you were rockers hard I, rockers I, That's I was friends i was friends with your drummer roxy before she was uh with you guys when she was with madam x yeah right? oh yeah and uh, uh, a couple of years ago yeah and I, I met her and we hung out and i said man she's really good you know she was really good and this is like <laughs> Before you guys started, so what year did you uh, did uh, fiction start? What year was that? Eighty three well, was it? Yeah, I joined the band in like nineteen eighty three, and Roxy joined in about eighty five. So oh, wow. it wow. was right after Madame X. Right. She joined uh, Vixen. Yeah. So yeah. Who was yeah. playing? I mean, who was playing drums before Roxy? She came in and played half a song, and I was like, "You're in. This is it." Who who played before her? Who played, played before her? Uh, uh, a girl named Lori Hedlund, also also really great. Hmm. But Roxy oh, no. definitely took it to a different level. Yeah, Roxy kicked ass. Roxy's great, yeah. Hey, Lita, yeah, I've got, I found one of my favorite names now. Okay, are you ready? Okay. Isabella Benvenuto. Oh, Isabella Benvenuto. I love that <laughs> name. <laughs> Who's that? That's my mom. That's her mom. Oh, She's an Italian right. sister. Hey, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Yeah. The bloody eye tie. Wow. You know what? I mean, that's a big deal. I'm getting I mean, hungry. I know. You know, that's know, the thing. I, it's so true. Some raviolis or something. Yeah, she so, was just wonderful. I lost her in the 90s. That sounds uh, like a tomato sauce. It's yeah, a bella it Benvenuto tomato sauce. <laughs> yeah, that's a great name. <laughs> but did you, now I know you You were born in England, right? You're out, out there. Um, but did, did you have uh, some Italian traditions? That, I mean, this is very important to us, Lita. I mean, music is important too. <laughs> However, this is really important. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, my mother was full-blown Roman. Uh, mm. You know, um, we moved to the United States when I was in second grade. And wow. uh, we were very much a European family. Uh, you know, of course, everything evolved around food. Yes. <laughs> yep. As you guys know, Carmel oh, yeah. Guinea, you know. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. Uh, and it still does today. I mean, somebody comes over and the food comes out big yeah. time. So I yeah. still enjoy cooking, but... Uh, she was uh, she was amazing, you know. Uh, when we first came to the United States, my father's boss came over for dinner, and she made some Jello for dessert. But she didn't know uh, what to do with it because it it was an American dessert at the uh. time. And so uh, when it came time to present the dessert. She put it in the oven and heated it up. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> oh my God! Yeah, oh, that sounds funny. about right. It came yeah. out liquid. Then yeah, it was liquid, right? Yeah, it was disgusting. <laughs> it was just, you know. <laughs> hey, hey, I want to know, Lita, capisce Italian? Me, no, just a little bit. Ah, uh, I understood that. Yeah, <laughs> that's all you need to know, right? Yeah. I, I mean, I know Lita for since she's like 17, I think, something like that. And I never knew that. There I didn't go. know oh, you were really? Italian. No. Oh, yeah. I didn't either. Well, you know what? You know what? What? Uh, what? Uh, uh, kind of tip, tip, uh, tip the cup is what I'm trying to say. Um, your middle name is said uh, she's got to be Italian. Yeah. Yeah. I know the Ford is my father's British, you know, so. Mm -hmm. Right. But your middle yeah. name was what, Rosanna or? Rosanna, yeah. Rosanna. Oh, yeah. Oh, Rosanna. That's a real deal. Yeah. That's a real deal there. Yeah. We got, uh, we're coming over for Sunday dinner, uh, Lita. I'll be there on Sunday, okay? Yeah, so oh, Toto, Toto, Toto must have named that song after her. Yeah, Toto. <laughs> sure, sure. We're going to go with that. <laughs> okay, I'll take it. So yeah. you guys are enjoying your, your uh, uh, solo careers and really doing well. And, you know, you got... I mean, you know, obviously there's 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 fireworks and bands and stuff. And you know, uh, uh, Janet, you know, I, I'm 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 looking at some of the history, obviously. And uh, there's re uh, people reunite, they break up, and all the the uh, the natural evolution of, of so many bands. But this whole VH1 bands reunited thing, how did that come to be? 
Well, actually, Roxy set me up on that one, and I totally was completely unaware. So I blame her for that. <laughs> so, but, but where um, were you? Yeah. What was? But where were you at that time? Like, were you guys? And my son was just a baby, and mm -hmm. I, I remember she called up and said, "My husband Mark has some business in Westport, in Connecticut," and she said, "Do you want to meet for lunch?" So I was like, "Okay." So you know, I'm very casual and just you know go there. And I turned around, I went to the front desk, and they said. You know, is there a, a Roxy Petrusi here? No, we don't have anybody by that name. And then I turned around and they had ambushed me. Uh, so, uh -huh. and, and of course you can't say no at that point. I said, well, did everyone else agree to do it? And he's like, yeah, everybody else is on board. And so, so, so you were broken up at the time, right? You were split up at yeah, the time. Oh yeah, we had them. And they, they ambushed I, you. I had of them in years. Wow. Wow. So no rehearsal. I mean, you guys just did it. Well, I, I think yeah, we rehearsed, rehearsed maybe once or twice while we were there. Um, but yeah, we just kind of it was spur of the moment, and of course, I was sick. That that really helped, and I hadn't sang in a long time, so it was it was stressful. But it was really great to see everybody. I gotta say, we we had yeah. some fun doing it. But didn't it lead to you guys doing some more gigs together? Not at that time, no. Um, everybody was still kind of doing their own thing. And like I said, my son was one year old at the time. So, you know, I was busy with that. And, you know, Cher was doing her own thing. And Jan had another version of Vixen together and working. So at that time it didn't, but it did kind of break the ice to, to future things. Yeah. So It seemed where, like it. Where was that? Where do you live? I'm now. in the Chicago area now. I'm in the in Chicago. Yeah. Uh, right, Ron. right near him. Right near Ron. <laughs> well, you know what? Since we're on that topic, uh, why don't we talk about your? Uh, if you don't mind me saying, Janet, let's talk a little bit about your marital status, shall we? Because I'm pretty oh. proud of you, frankly. Absolutely, Justin. <laughs> <laughs> He's here, Justin. He's got to put yeah. his underwear on. <laughs> Yeah, here's my husband. Hi, oh, Justin. Actually, you guys all know him. I know he's met Lita. Yeah, I met him. Uh, we played, yeah, that's... we played with, uh, here he is, with Vinny and, uh, and Carl. Oh, yeah, hey. And What's up, bro? Justin. How you doing? Right. Yeah, let me ask you a question, though. Uh, I'm curious, how did you guys meet? Ah, uh, <laughs> Ron. Actually, Lita, you were there the night that Justin and I met. Yep. Yeah. Ron, you were the night there the night that Justin. And wait, I wait. Yep. I, I I don't think I know Justin. Vinny, you yeah. know Justin? Yeah, we played at the Christmas benefit. Yes. Yeah. How you guys doing? In the, on the East Coast there with uh, we played with Janet and the PLR and Justin. Ride. Remember, Carmine? Yeah. No. It we, was we, the radio <laughs> station in the furniture store. Oh, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> Place. In, in Connecticut, in Connecticut. Yeah. Yes. So I had I had Vixen and I had Lita on the same bill at the Arcata Theater. Yeah. And ah. holy smoke, the Justin was there, and bam, fireworks. That's right. Oh, We've wow. never been the same since. So I'm cool. You can either blame me or thank me. It's up to you. It depends what night of the week, right? We're th yeah, we're thanking we're, you we're right thanking now. You. <laughs> But you but guys there's did always... some songs together recently, didn't you? Justin and Janet, you guys recorded some songs or some videos or something? Oh, yeah, we, we did. Just, we just released our third album together. Oh, nice. Yeah. So yeah, cool. The first two were just under Janet Gardner, and now this one is called Synergy, and it's actually Gardner James. Oh, so. awesome. Awesome. And, and cool. uh, Justin's nice. playing guitar, of course, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, and we wrote all the songs together. Oh, that's so fun. That's cool. Can't you wait to have you guys it. back. Wow. Yay. Can't wait to have you guys back, man. Hey, Lita, uh, you know what? Um, close my eyes forever, right? Um, yeah. I, I really, you know, I, I, I read about the story. I read about, you know, you and Ozzy and something. I, I, I can just imagine what that experience was like trying to write a song with Ozzy Osbourne. 
<laughs> yes. It was insane. I could va I could vouch for that. <laughs> did you write? I could, I could too. And I I did the uh, the fi finishing touches of Bark at the Moon, doing the vocals with Ozzy. It was oh. like I think it was two or three words at a time, recording them, because he oh. couldn't he couldn't remember all of them. You know, so I was like, all right, let's do let's do those three now, Oz. You know. Oh wow! What was your experience, experience like? Yours? Me, um, I had I had an interesting experience when we wrote "Close My Eyes." Uh, Sharon was my manager at the time, and oh, wow. uh, and she, her and Ozzy, we were in the recording studio, um, and they came to the studio to bring me a house a housewarming gift, which was a life size duplicate of Coco the gorilla from the <laughs> San Diego Zoo. Okay. And, you know, Ozzy walks in with this Coco with the gorilla, which is as big as he is. And it's holding the kitten. You know, I don't know if you remember, Coco the gorilla had a kitten. So the kitten was stitched onto this Coco the gorilla. And so uh, I took a break from recording and Ozzy and I started playing pool. And uh, we had some wine. And Sharon got bored and she left. And she left Ozzy with me. And wow. <laughs> I know that. I know that one. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we had a great night. We had a lot of fun. There was a guitar and amplifier in the little room next to the the pool table, and uh, Ozzy and I went in this little room with our wine, and we closed the door, and um, he started singing. Uh, Close my eyes. And um, and I started playing guitar. And next thing I know, we came out of that room and the sun was up. Right. You, know, you know that one too, right, Karma? Yeah. So that all happened just that one night that the song was put together, basically? Yeah, well, I took the song home and worked on it after that night, what was left. But, I mean, Ozzy had, uh, you know, if I close my eyes forever, will it all remain the same? And uh, if, if I close my eyes forever, will it all remain unchanged? And I think at that time, those lyrics might have been directed towards maybe his relationship with Sharon. Mm. Mm. And he didn't say that to me, but I kind of felt those vibes. Right. Uh, they were going yeah. through some turmoil at the time. Yeah, I think I think they're always going through turmoil. I know. <laughs> when I when I joined the band, I went on the road in Europe, and I I'm sitting in the tour bus, and I look inside. They're inside like a uh, you know a side of the road kind of a restaurant, and with glass front. And all of a sudden, I see Ozzy hold off and punch Sharon in the face. I said, "Whoa!" whoa. <laughs> I went like, "Whoa!" And I said to Bob Daisy, "I start going off the bus." He goes, "Where are you going?" I said, yeah, "Ozzy just hit Sharon in the face." You know, that ain't cool. You know, I'm gonna go like help her out. So, Vince, so Bob says, stay out of it. Yeah. So he held me back, and sure enough, a few minutes later, Sharon hauled off and hit him right smack in the face with a punch. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. Wow. Yeah, man. I think he said, can, uh... now Bob says, don't worry about it. It happens all the time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I bet you TMZ rents a bedroom in their house. Uh, now. <laughs> I know. <laughs> back then, nobody cared, nobody cared you know. So let me ask you, let me ask you, ladies here. I mean, I know um, that, uh, like, Lita, I know one of your inspirations, Richie Blackmore, and you know, you've got a lot of these uh, probably similar inspirations. But I, I, I do want to touch back on the female uh, situation. Who would be a female, both of you ladies, um, a female inspiration? I mean, I heard uh, um, one uh, one young lady talk about like Connie Francis being a vocal inspiration. Uh, really? Yeah, I mean, I mean that's the thing because she, I mean she was a she was a rock star of her of her era for sure. Uh, my aunt Connie, as I talk, to, I, I I call her. But who would be a female inspiration to you guys, vocally or on guitar? Well, you know what? I probably vocally because of the guitar. Actually, both because that'd be really interesting. The guitar, yeah, both, yeah, yeah. both. Uh, I mean, you know, I I was a guitar player way before I was a singer, and uh, there there really weren't too many female mm -hmm. guitar players or uh, singers that I really loved 
back in when I was first beginning. I mean, of course, Janis Joplin had the attitude. Yeah. That vocal style that was just off the hook. You know, I don't know anyone that couldn't love Janis Joplin. But I don't know. What about you, Janet? Well, I mean, you were talking about, you know, Connie Francis. And if you go way back, I mean, mm -hmm. like my initial memories of hearing like Edda James. Oh, yeah. That oh, kind of, yeah. The, the initial raspy sort of gritty, greasy Bluesy. kind of sounding mm -hmm. stuff. I mean, that, I mean, I could trace my roots back to like her. And then, like Lita said, then there was Janis Joplin and, you know. Then the what about Tina Turner? Turner? Yeah, man. And, you know, since then there's been like an avalanche of amazing female vocalists and still are. So there was definitely a lot of people to get the way. And there was plenty of inspiration from, you know, different soul singers or Aretha Franklin. When I would listen to her, I would get just lost in it. And so many of those, and I think the biggest one definitely for like modern hard rock singers would definitely be Joplin. Joplin. Oh yeah, it's amazing, and especially in her short life. I mean, it's unbelievable how, yeah. what an effect uh, her and Jimmy have had on so many rock uh, lives. You know, inspiration wise, you hear this consistently, but they were so unique in their styles and their power, vocally with the guitar or whatever it was. You know, it was just it was just you really understand it when you talk decades later and still how those 29 year olds really affected uh, so many careers, really something. Well, yeah, it was so, you know, uninhibited. Mm -hmm. I mean, she was the first woman that I really heard that had no inhibitions mm -hmm. whatsoever. There was nothing about being female about her, didn't matter. There was nothing about being proper, or no, she she drank a lot. What a female should <laughs> that always helps. Should be. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know, we we you played know, we, amazing. 1969, we played a show with uh, uh, Janis Joplin and uh, Manila Fudge and we and Johnny Winter, and oh, we, did yeah. a, we did it. We did it. We did a jam. So it was me, Tim Bogert. You, you remember? Uh, Tim Lita, we had lunch with Tim that time. Yeah, of course. That was an interesting lunch. Yes. Tim Bogut, me, and Lita at, at an IHOP. <laughs> that was fun. IHOP. Okay. Anyway, so so, <laughs> back you, Lita. so we were playing. We were playing a blues with with Johnny Winter, Tim Bogut, me, Janis Chaplin singing, and in the solo, Janis came back to me. She had a bottle of Jack, and she stuck the Jack in my face. And just tilted it up, and so I mean, I got such a gigantic jolt of Jack Daniels, I almost fell off the drum stool. And she was drinking it; she was drinking it like Coca Cola, you know. Just kept, oh, it was amazing. But what a voice on her! What an attitude on her! And uh, wow, she was she was an amazing personality. I'm, I'm so yeah. glad I got to hear that story. Yeah. that's amazing. I'm so jealous. Yeah, yeah. I know. <laughs> Well, there's got to be somebody that you were you've either played with, or that you're just totally like, oh my gosh, I'm the biggest fan, and you got starstruck. I mean, even as big as stars as you guys are, there's got to be somebody that you were in their presence just like that. What about um, Mick Jagger? Oh my gosh. Okay. You guys got any Jagger stories? No. What? <laughs> I never met him. No way. Uh... Well, I think he's probably my greatest vocal inspiration because uh, I mean I loved Etta James too but I think um, Mick is like the male version of Etta almost wow interesting you know I mean yeah I mean if you think about it they are yeah. you listen to them well the both you need both have a very that, unique because I, I see Mick Jagger in you when you're on stage the way you move and stuff, I see a lot of Mick Jagger in you. It's funny that you said that because I, I don't think I've ever heard you say that, but I totally get it. I totally see oh, it. Oh, wow. That's cool. The attitude yeah. and the, I, I love it. And it's interesting because, you know, both you guys came up, you know, around the, uh, uh, a couple years difference here or there, but, uh, you know, typically the 80s came 
and a lot of that 80s pop uh, uh, sound started coming. But you guys really kind of fought that. You guys stayed true to yourselves and, and stayed the, the hard rock road. Was that a difficult thing to do? And not true. succumb to the what was it was it was it hard not to succumb to that eighties pop uh, uh, kind of sound that was taken over at the time? Oh my God, I got so much shit from uh, from the record company. You know, Lita, put some clothes on. Lita, oh take off that blush. Lita, tone down your eyeshadow. You know, get Lita, get rid of that guitar. It has blood. Come on, on. really? And I, I'm like, yeah, well, no, I'm not getting rid of anything, you know. Well, we can't put that record in Walmart. Or we can't put that record in Target because yeah. it has blood on it. And you don't have any pants on. <laughs> I had that eyeshadow problem, too. Oh, you did? <laughs> Doesn't shock any of us, Vinny. I'm telling you. <laughs> I know. It's this shirt and the eyeshadow is clashing. No, it's just they wanted me to be somebody I wasn't. Yeah, they and always I, want that. I couldn't do it. Jump on but, the you know, that, that whole flock of seagulls kind of uh, thing uh, was happening, you know? Uh, and that, uh, I know. That's what I'm saying. But it was it was taken over. And how, you know, again, you're, you're battling the record companies. You're yeah. battling sometimes management. Like, hey... This is the next step. You got to do this. Oh, it's hard. I know God. it's hard, right? They used to slip notes and cards and letters telling me, you know, what to do with my, myself. They would slip them under my hotel room doors. My <laughs> managers, you know, Lita, you need to stop doing this. And Lita, you need to quit wow. doing that. And I'm just like, what the fuck do you know? Right. Hey, Lita, did, did you get the letters I slipped under your door? Yeah, baby. <laughs> I'm in room 219. Yeah, I'll see you there. Bring some pasta. Yeah, right. <laughs> bring the noodle. Bring your, mom, bring your mama's sauce. Hey, Lita, who influenced you on guitar? You can get to that. Yes. Oh, God, well, you know, uh, big, big Black Sabbath fan. Yeah. Right from... Uh, the get-go, I, I just loved the Sabbath riffs, and uh, oh, yeah. it was so dark and powerful. Yeah. I just uh, I had to learn how to do that. <laughs> it was just so badass. And Vinny, I mean, you're, you got to play with them for so many, so many yeah. fucking shows, and you know, you Tony, played Tony with, was evil and badass. So I mean, just incredible way he played. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Even just the chord, you could tell it's Tony the way the chord was vibrato, you know. And yeah. The, the notes and everything was just so dark. Yeah. I loved it, obviously. Yeah. So during yeah. this lockdown, did uh, uh, ladies, I know, uh, Janet, we touched on, you got some new music. Um, what's the status of it? Is it coming out or is it just come out? <clears throat> um, Justin, I, our album came out August 7th. Okay. So it's been out for a few months now, and you know it's it's doing great. It's on Spotify, and you know you can buy it on Amazon if you want a physical copy. And we did four videos because you know we're stuck at home. We can't tour. Yeah. No one can see us. We can't see anyone. So we did a bunch of videos for this album too. So that's kept us busy. And then we're working on album number four now. Cool. That's something. Lita, are you working on some new music? Oh my God! If you only knew, I um, I've been working on music since uh, since 2014, <laughs> six years now on this wow. record. <laughs> really? You know, wow. together with touring and trying to record. You know, I live on the West Coast. Mm -hmm. The producers and the songwriters are on the East Coast, and uh, you know they tour, and then I tour, and then uh, the songs. It's almost like I had to live them before mm -hmm. I could write them. Oh, I see. And they're really just, I don't know, they're just off the hook. They're off the hook. And we've lost, uh, my songwriting partner died. Oh, jeez. Uh, it's like, dude, you know, but he, he's watching over us. I know he's watching over us because amazing things happened after, after we lost him. And I knew it was him up there maneuvering stuff. Mm-hmm. Wow. So, uh, so did, he of, did he die of COVID? 
No. Oh, okay. So no. is that your is that your process, Lita? I mean, you really really take it, you know, uh, let uh, let life hit you one way or another and just kind of absorb it and write it down? With this album, we I did, yeah. I did. And um, Gary Hoey and I are both playing guitars on this record. And uh, now the record's done. We recorded everything. We're just going to do some final mixing and mastering. And listening back to what Hoey and I played on guitars... It's just, uh, Gary, is yeah, that Gary. you or is that me? Wow, <laughs> I don't really? really know. I think that's me on your guitar. <laughs> and, and so we would just throw the guitar back and forth to each other in the studio. And we would say stuff like, you know, oh, this part doesn't work. Hey, grab the Telecaster. Um, or, you know, hey, grab the, the, t the Taylor. Let's put some acoustic on this. So there's some really amazing guitar work on this record, and I'm so proud of it. Really wow. can't wait. And the, the lyrics and everything, it's a concept record. Mm -hmm. so well, that's, it, a, that's exciting that uh, Gary uh, is such a part of it. He does, obviously does his, his ho 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 Christmas show every year, but uh, he's also such a bluesy. Uh, you know, I, I think of you and I think of him, and he's such a bluesy rock uh, kind of a guy versus your kind of little harder edge rock. So the combination has got to be really exciting. It's really, really great. It's really great. I mean, we did some stuff. The last solo we played together, I was just like, oh, my God, it sounds like the Scorpions 2021 <laughs> or 2020. It's just so exciting. Because, you know, I'll play something, and then he just looks at it and says, oh, i got to put a harmony with that. And then he'll grab a guitar and play a harmony with it, and it just comes to life. Super cool stuff. So I'm excited. Wow. So, you know, I've, I've spoken to a couple, uh, you know, one of the uh, times, I think I, it was when I had uh, uh, Vixen with you guys, Janet, I, I had a, I always try to give an opportunity at, at my theater, uh, one, any of the shows that I do, to try to have like a, a, a young band, you know, open or get a little shot, just to try to give them that little, that little push. And, and experience what it's like to be around superstars such as yourselves. And one of the bands, I can't think of the name of it right now, I don't know if you remember, there were three bands on it. And matter of fact, it might've been the, <clears throat> the show that you did, Alina, as well. I think I had three bands. And these young girls were just in awe of both you ladies, both of the bands, and you've given so much uh, inspiration to these young, especially young girls. Is there a little bit of uh, advice you can give to, to, to them? As it pertains to today, what do you think, Janet? Yeah. <laughs> I like that. I, look, what, what yep. just, I don't know. What do you think, Janet? <laughs> <laughs> it's like the newscast. Back to yeah, you, yeah, Janet. Yeah. Back to you, I, Janet. <laughs> I would say get out there and play every chance you get. You know, take every opportunity to, to play in front of people and and get used to it and and get real with what you're doing and with the audience. But we can't do that right now. So, yeah. you know, be your authentic self. Do, do what's in your heart, do what's in your soul, and people will feel it. Pretty simple. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Different so, world now with uh, not being able to play live. Totally different. So, yeah. so Janet, your your band right now is just you and Justin, correct? No, we have a bass, bassist and a, a drummer that oh, okay. we had pretty much the entire time. Richie Rivera on drums. And Bloody Josh Mary, right, Jen. And Gigi on bass. Okay. So. And Lita, how's your band uh, hanging in there? They're amazing. They just never waver. You know, uh, Bobby Rock played the drums on 11 tracks just oh, recently yeah. in September. Oh, yeah. Scott is, yeah. Yeah, great. And, uh, we, we got some stories about Bobby Rock, me and Vinny. No, I bet that you can. That you can't hey, talk about. Hey, I went to see Lita in Buffalo, New York, outside, and I'm standing on the side of the stage, and you guys are playing, and Bobby Rock's playing, and his cymbal fell down. <laughs> so uh, I'm looking around, going, well, "Where's the dude? You know, gonna come up and fix the cymbal?" Nobody came up, so I went on stage and I fixed it for him. Really? And he didn't know. He looked over. He almost fell off the drums. <laughs> what an ex what an expensive drum tech he had that yeah, night, right? huh? I know. We, we, did know, a, we did I a drum the, I got the angle perfect. I saw <laughs> we did a, 
We did a drum clinic together, me, Vinny, and Bobby back back years ago. And uh, two funny things happened on that tour. One, one of them was, well, actually, one was a separate issue, not with Vinny, but, uh, you know, Bobby's a health freak, right, Lita? Yeah. Yeah, so he would, like, have everything healthy. He would not eat any junk food and everything. So we would go on the road and we, we deliberately would stop at a Waffle House, <laughs> you know? Oh. And, and, and we'd sit there, and Bobby would, he'd always carry his food around. And, and we'd go, oh, Bobby, look at this waffle. And we'd put it past his face and <laughs> put the syrup on it and the butter, you know, and just busted his chops to the end. And another time we went to, uh, I did a clinic with him in Minneapolis. And uh, we went out, me and Bobby went out with, with some friends. And I had some talcum powder that the, uh, the, the, it broke, you know, the bottle broke. So there was a big blob of talcum powder on my table. So when we come back, we were smoking a joint and Bobby was in the next room and I had come, some people in my room. And then Bobby came in my room, just as he came in the room, there's a knock on the door. We said, yeah, who is it? It's the police, right? <laughs> and then they came in with dogs and all that stuff. They found the joint they said, oh, the joint, that's nothing. That's only a ticket. I said, so what are you here for? He points to the talcum powder. <laughs> really? He said, we're here for that. God. I said, that? He said, what's that? I said, that's shower to shower. You know? <laughs> so he goes over and he goes over and puts it, you know, his Taste finger in it, tastes it, and he goes, the other cop goes, shower to shower. <laughs> so me and Bobby laughed, and we it was so funny. You know, but I, I got a ticket for a smoking pot. I paid 75 bucks. <laughs> That's insane. Yeah, ask him. Ask him about that when you see him. <laughs> oh my God, I would be horrified. Yeah, it was funny. So let me ask all of you: How is this? You know, it's great to hear the stories of. You know, obviously, when you're in a band, you have stories amongst each other. But it's so it's you guys interface with each other so much, other musicians, and you collaborate. And 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 how does this? How does this happen? I mean, aside from how it happened for Lita with Ozzy. Uh, uh, that was an extremely interesting story. But, um, like, for example, you've got Gary Hoey. I know you've had uh, experience, Lita, with uh, with one of our good friends, Ronnie Thal, you know, Bumblefoot. Yeah. And, uh, you know, another just tremendous performer. And I know you collaborated with him as well, right? Yes, yeah. Yeah, I, I've, um, I've been blessed in my life to play with a lot of the one, most wonderful musicians in the music industry right from the very beginning, you know, being involved with Kim Fowley yeah. in the Runaways days. <clears throat> yeah. He just introduced me to everybody, including Richie Blackmore. Wow. You know, I was just so in love with Richie. Yeah. Well, and, he's uh, such a unique guy, my God. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, you know, just... I just... There's so many great people and people that have influenced so many lives in the music industry and I've just been so blessed to to learn from them and grow up with them and get high with them, Carmine. Yeah. Jam all night long. Yeah. Shower, shower to shower. You remember, you remember the, yeah, the shower to shower? I remember when Lita, after she took a break from the mm -hmm. music business, she started coming back. You played B.B. King's. Oh, yeah. Right? Oh and I went, up, I went up and jammed with you, remember? We oh, did, man. I don't yeah. know what we did. I don't know what we did, but uh, that was a lot of we fun. We played uh, Jimi Hendrix, Fire. Oh, we played Fire. Okay. Good <laughs> yeah. song. That was good fun. That. Yeah. But that's the thing. I mean, you, again, you, you, you've collaborated with some of the best. You know, Janet and Vixen, you've, you've got, you know, uh, as, uh, uh, I know Anita brought up uh, Richard Mark. I know you co-wrote a song with, uh, you guys co-wrote a song with uh, Richard, didn't you? Um, yeah, he he actually wrote the song, but um, he wrote it for us. And yeah, it was it was really amazing working with him because, I mean, he really nailed what we were about after you know knowing us for maybe a year. But how um, does that happen? A guy like Richard Marks writing for Vixen? How does that even happen? We met through our management company. We had the same manager, and Lita, you remember Alan Novak? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that's how we met him because we had the same manager, and we, you know, we had talked to him now and then, and he came to see us play, and we we sort of became friends. And for me, 
that's really important to make a connection with somebody. I'm not one of those people that can go on a songwriting assignment, you know, with a stranger. Right. It's like a blind date or something. I, I really can't do that. In order to work well with somebody, I have to know them and have a connection and feel comfortable. And Richard was amazing at doing that, just kind of getting to the meat of it and figuring out what, what we were about and how he was going to get the best performance out of all of us. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he had a great voice. Doesn't he, really- he do, uh, doesn't he do security on airplanes, too? No. <laughs> You remember no, he that? Doesn't. I missed that. What? He, he does security on airplanes. There was an airplane incident, and he broke up the fight on the airplane right. a couple of years ago. You know, yeah, Bron, right? Absolutely. And there was a video of him. Yeah, he like nobody did anything. He got up and he. Yep. I don't know if he punched the guy. He did or the something. Chicago thing. He lives out here, you know, uh, half the time. But that was a big thing. It was a big yeah. thing. Richard yeah. Mark breaks a fight on an airplane and all this stuff. <laughs> well, it's amazing. You know about his pop yeah. career. You know about his pop career. You know his songs. But you know he does this show, this acoustic show that he does. You know, half of it or more is all the songs that he's written for people. It's astounding. The yeah. songs he's written for people. I mean, astounding. Well, he's won Grammys. He's an amazing yeah, yeah. writer. I mean, he's a great singer. You know, he's a great musician. I love his voice. I love his voice. Yeah, he's got a great voice. And, and voice. writes really amazing songs. He's lucky hey, that we knew him and got to work with him. Absolutely. Lita, you, you talked about, we, we touched on Richie before, but I'm going to mention this. Did, were you, did you ever sh- share a stage with Richie? Uh, we toured with uh, Blackmore's Rainbow when Jolyn Turner was their lead singer, I think it was 83 or 84, we toured Europe with Blackmore's Rainbow. That was a lot of fun. Richie would hand me my guitar every once in a while. Like I'd look over at the tech, you know, to switch <laughs> guitars and Richie would be standing there. Here, He was just, uh, he was just a kid. He was such a cute guy. You know, it's like a personality, a part of his personality that not a lot of people would see. Mm-hmm. But, well, uh, that's it. That's it. You hear about Richie. Yeah. And he's he's kind of he's kind of a, a very um, I don't even know what secluded, word. secluded, yeah, yeah. Kind of guy. Yeah. You don't you don't picture him like actually like being not. I don't want to say friendly, but you know, kind of generous with his time with somebody backstage. But it sounds like you had some nice backstage moments with him. Oh yeah, yeah. He's just an amazing person all the way around. I mean, creatively, of course. You know. Yeah. But yeah, uh, I mean, but personally, a lot of cool things, a lot of cool things. He was uh, very much into magic and um, yeah, black magic. Hello. But I mean, it, it was just an, it was incredible. I remember one time uh, we did a show in um, Dow- in Scotland, and we stayed at the Dalhousie Castle, mm-hmm. and uh, and Richie had. Um, he had a seance in the library and uh, wow. I, I was like, I'm not going in that seance. <laughs> I just thought, you know what, I'm going to go out and, and have a drink and go ride a horse because they have a stable. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so this, this, this goddamn horse took off on me and just started running through the forest and I couldn't stop him. Oh no. And that'll he, teach you to piss off from Blackmore. Yeah. Oh, it was just the weirdest thing. Trees were, were flying over my head and I'm <laughs> ducking down and trying I'm thinking I'm gonna die. This is oh, this is like a, this is a, die. this is your next video, Lita. <laughs> 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 For the album. <laughs> I mean really I mean I'll Seance? Be, yeah Maybe right funny. That's funny. Yeah. I mean, really. Hey, hey Ronnie, Ronnie. Ronnie used to do seances, too. And Ronnie played with Richie. Yeah. Especially in England, in these old hotels we stayed. Yeah. And we did some, some of those, too. Vinny, yeah, do, you think, do you think Ronnie do you think Ronnie actually kind of picked it up from Richie? Oh, yeah, of course. Oh, without a doubt. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. We stayed in these, like, those kind of hotels and, you know. Yeah. And uh, it's supposed to be haunted, and then hey, let's have a seance tonight, you know. And uh, he he had some experiences. He said uh, one night uh, that we did it, and then later on, Wendy almost fell down the steps. Somebody pushed her. 
you know? And, uh, and there was nobody there. There was nobody there. Wow. And then I had to walk across the courtyard. It was like stables that were turned into rooms. So after all this, now it's like three in the morning. I have to go walk across this haunted courtyard to go to my room. I'm like, oh, I'm not. But then, no, and no, no, knowing you, Vin, you didn't like that. <laughs> no, I didn't like that. So, there was a, so I got on this horse, right? No, I'm kidding. No, yeah, you right. <laughs> I've never been on a horse. I've never been on a horse. Me neither. Oh, maybe, maybe you should. Vinny, was, was Ronnie, uh, I mean, because I have never heard this, that part about uh, Ronnie, about that, I don't, want, uh, I don't know if it's spiritual or, you know, about the other side. Was he very much into that kind of thing? The well, supernatural? Well, it was time for it when you're in a, a old hotel castle in England and it's drizzly no, out and thunder yeah. and shit now. Yeah, yeah but you look that. at Ronnie's house. Ronnie based Ronnie's his house, house. His house looked like old his England. His house looked like that. Yeah. His yeah. House was like yeah. that too. You know. And those and places. And were Sabbath. Like we were in the studio with with Sabbath uh, in L.A. and Rod Stewart and Carmine was next door. So we put all these upside down crosses <laughs> all over the place. <laughs> and they were coming in, people from Rod's camp were coming yeah. in going, is that for real? And you yeah. know, so we, we saw that, so we just elaborated on that it. That was funny, that was funny. Awesome. So any plans, I mean, I know, I mean, as management talked about, uh, you know, hey, let's get ready for spring or anything. Are you guys uh, talking those terms yet? Yeah, we've got some, some shows it's... coming up in December. Oh, you think really? you'll play them? Yeah, well, they're acoustic performances, and they're, they're sort of downsized. But uh, Patrick and I are going to go out and do some acoustic shows together. So that's things awesome. are moving, you know. Things are starting to move, so that's good. Good. Well, I can't wait to have you guys back at the Arcata Theater. Oh, you again. can't wait to have anybody back. All right. <laughs> you know, you're right. You're That's right. True. I'm dying That's over true. here. I'm yeah. dying. I but know. I know. know. It's, it's so, it's yeah. so freaking sad that we're, everybody's stuck in this mess. You know, I know, man. I mean, I and mean, that's the thing. I mean, it's at this point now. No, you know, we got to, we're supposed to have this vaccine now and everything. I mean, I'm feeling that we will be able to tour just after the holidays, like right after January. I think, I think uh, we'll have a Valentine's Day breakout. That's what I think. Yay! That's Yay, what I'm I like feeling. That. Party at Ron's place. Yeah. Yes, a party at my place. Meatballs for everybody. Oh, yeah. now you're talking. You're on. Right. All right, Janet Gardner, thank you so much. Lita Ford, we love you guys. Yeah, really Lita, good to hear you. Guys. My pleasure. Nice I'm gonna I'm gonna call you, Lita. I'm gonna call you and talk. And Janet. Cool. All right, well, all the best, you guys. Hey, everybody out there, thank you for joining us again. Artists on lockdown. Next We're week. Next week. Yes, next go week. ahead, Carmine. Who's next week? Who's next week? We've got Elliot, I think, next week, don't yeah, we? Elliot, Elliot Easton and Mark Farner next week. Oh, and Mark Farner, too. Grand Funk Railroad yeah, Man. Yeah, yeah. Another great show. Yeah. yeah so fun. wish you all the best. Make sure you like us. Make sure you share it. Artists on Lockdown, hanging and banging every Thursday night. Leo <laughs> Ford, Janet Gardner, we love you very much. Stay safe. Stay healthy, as we say to everybody else. Thank you, else guys. Here. See you. Thank, Thank you. you. And all the yeah, fans coming. watching. See you, Leo. See you, Janet. Good luck, everybody. Good luck, everybody. I love you bye guys. Bye. Love you love too. You. See you later. Bye bye. Bye. Set me free, why talk?